The Pentagon has developed two kinds of inexpensive sea mines that could quickly lay down a minefield in the enemy's backyard. The new skipjack and flounder mines are aerial bombs modified to quietly wait under sea and destroy passing enemy ships. Using aircraft to lay mines goes back to World War II, as call. Mike Starbaby Biotrata writes in The Diplomat. A retired Air Force fighter crewman, Biotrata explains that the technique is difficult to pull off. For one thing, minefields must be laid in patterns to ensure adequate coverage of a target, such as the mouth of a harbor or strait. Mark 62 quick strike mines, which are 500 pound uh, inert mines, and the goal is to take those and to deliver them to the uh, mine lane that is the target area for us, just off of a small island in the Baltic region. This was a problem when the U.S. Army Air Force tried to mine from high altitude during Wei. The accuracy was poor. In Vietnam and the Persian Gulf War, mining from low altitude could be effective but was hazardous to air crews. So why are aerial mines suddenly back? These days, rising tensions with China, Iran, and Russia have increased the likelihood of the United States being drawn into a conflict with large, seagoing countries. These countries, particularly China, are economically heavily dependent on the global shipping system. Their navies would also be in a position to challenge the U.S. Navy. Sea mines can cut off countries from shipping routes because they make it too dangerous for shipping companies. Such a minefield could also create an ogo zones for enemy warships, forcing them to operate where they are at a disadvantage or bottle them up in port until the minefield was cleared. Uh, the Quick Strike J is a guided version of the Quick Strike mine uh, using the JDAM Pail Kit and the components from the quick strike which is already in the inventory. Even a tiny minefield has a tremendous psychological value. As General Norman Schwarzkopf famously said during the Persian Gulf War, it only takes one mine. The new generation of quick strike mines change all of that. Ordinary aerial bombs filled with high explosive and fitted with a magnetic fuse, the 2,000 pound skipjack bombs and 500 pound. Flounders were developed quickly and are economical to boot. Both are GPS guided, using the Joint Directed Attack Munition Bolt-On Guidance Kit. The skipjack is dropped like an ordinary bomb and has a relatively short range, but Flounder has the ability to glide to more distant targets. This means that a single aircraft such as a B-1B Lancer bomber can lay one or more minefields in a single high-altitude pass scattering the mines with precision to ensure good coverage of the ocean below. Here's a video of unguided MK. 62 quick strike mines being loaded on a B-52 bomber. These are 500-pound bombs without GPS guidance or winglets of the flounder mine. The tail fins, known as snake high are designed to spread out during descent, slowing the mine's speed.